Welcome back to Child Time Pod. It's your host, Red. We got a video today from Manosphere. Single mom shocked that no man wants to raise their kids. <laughs> Please like subscribe down below. I really appreciate that. Let's get that child. Ciao time. This comment. This comment right here. Um, I really don't think that he's speaking for all men. Most men. Um, because I know that there will be somebody that steps up one day. Maybe. Um, to be some sort of father figure for my child. And why do you think that it's also very like I'm very surprised that you felt comfortable actually typing this out and commenting on someone's video like it's just the wildest thing you don't know my circumstances with my child um, or his father why do we and care nobody need cares to know. you chose that man you chose to be with him and yeah that's basically it so Hopefully he's not speaking for all men out there, but this was just really disappointing to see. You let him hit it raw. You didn't have second thoughts. Now you're a single mom. Now you're a single mom. No, he doesn't speak for all men. Now, while it's true, I have told a lot of young men not to pursue a relationship with a single mother. I'm old enough to understand that you cannot control who you fall in love with in life sometimes. Can you see, guys, how much of a simp he is? How can you just fall in love with somebody if you see the red flags, if you have boundaries in place, if you don't talk with single mothers from the start? How can you just fall in love? So basically, he's saying, I'm too emotional. I'm driven by my emotions and I can't make good decisions. I'm not logical. I really don't think that he's speaking for all men. It's true. Oh, honey, just wait until they say it right to your face. It feels so much better. <laughs> I really don't think that he's speaking for all men. Ooh, hot same, hot same. I am not raising somebody else's kids, so I'm, I'm with the men here on this conversation. I really don't think that he's speaking for all men. There are 48,000 comments on Jeez. that video. And if you have a second, I would love to show you some of my favorites. I want to start right here because I want to know if anyone else has had this experience. I raised my stepson since he was two just to be told once he became an adult by my ex-wife that she used me to help her raise him, but she never loved me. Never again. Even some of the ladies started getting in on this, expecting a- Damn. That was a devastating one to go after 18 years for her to say that to you. What a fucking whore, man. Wow. Wow. Knight in shining armor to come swoop you up and fix all yeah. your problems is wild. And having to deal with a, da a baby daddy? Nah, men are right. It is a no. I bet she didn't see the comment section going this way. He's yeah. speaking for me. He's speaking for 90% of men. He is our spokesman. I really don't think that he's speaking for all men. I am a single guy with no kids. I was married one time before. I had a stepson. We were sitting at the dinner table. And he looked up at me at the dinner table and said, Hey, Randall, what can I call you? I was like, you can call me anything that you want to. Well, he wanted to call me dad, which I'm perfectly okay with. We had a healthy relationship. Well, the ex-wife decided to step in and say, you will never call him dad. He will never be your dad. He is Randall to you, and you will refer to him as Randall. Ouch. I really don't think that he's speaking for all men. 100% he is speaking for all men. I really don't think that he's speaking for all men, um, because I know that there will be somebody that <laughs> steps up one day. Um to be some sort of father figure for my child and it's also very like i'm very surprised that you felt comfortable actually typing this out and commenting on someone's video like it's just the wildest thing i really don't think that he's speaking for all men i have been a guy that's raised other kids other kids that wasn't mine belonged to other men i raised two with my wife for about 12 years one of them was two when I got with her, and she was pregnant with the other one. And I don't get to see my daughter now. Yeah. That shit hurts. I had to drag her ass to court to get to see my son. I really don't think that he's speaking for all men. A lot of men feel this way because a lot of women do not allow stepdaddies to discipline their badass kids. I really that's true guys just before i recorded this video i went to the park i have a, a park like five minutes away i went to the park with my dog 
and there was a, a woman with a child, I don't know if she's a single mother, and the child was screaming and kicking her and hitting her because he wanted to stay in the park more. And he was, oh my God, everybody looked at her. Now just think about it. If that, that woman is a single mother, you have to deal with that, that, that child and you can't discipline him. Mm. Why would you want to deal with that? If you tell me that you want to deal with that, you're just telling me how stupid you are. Think that he's speaking for all men? You see a child as a mess that a man makes. So you view yourself as a mess that your father made. Can you see, guys? Women and logic don't mix together. We don't see our own children as a mess. We see other men's children as a mess. We don't want to clean up that mess. That's true. That's their their children. That's not our children. Why is it my duty to raise another man's child? Why? I don't get it. I really don't think that he's speaking for all men. With all due respect to my mother, as a grown, single, adult man with no kids, absolutely not. I totally agree with this dude. I really don't think that he's speaking for all men. Oh my God, don't listen to these idiots. That is not what a real man does. A real man steps up and takes care of his children as well as somebody else's children. I, really I don't think she was talking about finding a man that has his own kids. I think she was talking about finding a single guy. Think that he's speaking for all men? I am not 100% certain about most things in life, but I'm 100% certain she did not think these comments was gonna go this way. I really don't think that yeah. he's speaking for all men. I am here to tell you, there are good men out there. There will be a man that comes and picks you. A simp. Don't call him a man. A simp. And your son. As a single mom at 27, let's say I was your man, what would I need to pay for? I don't think you would need to pay for anything. I wouldn't see it that way. Um, I think we can both contribute to, to building a life together. Let's say I wanted to go to McDonald's and you had your kid with you. Would I be expected to pay for the two of you or just you? Yeah. Oh, no. Just me. That's, that's my baby. That's my responsibility. That's so Good cap, mom. guys. That's so cap. 99% of single mothers would expect you to pay for her and her kid. Don't be... You're, I, I don't disagree with you, Manosphere. I'm gonna say she does seem like a little bit nicer of a one, a little bit more, main, ma little tame. She might be that 10%. Maybe, maybe. Well, I'll give her the benefit of the doubt, this particular one. Fooled. I wouldn't, I mean, if he wants to do that, it's fine, but I don't expect it. Not the expectation. Even if we've been dating for a while. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no. Would I need to provide anything for your child at all, or? No, just kind of be there. Just be there for us, both of us. Five mistakes that keep you in the friend zone. Focusing only on providing comfort for her, but not providing fun. Waiting for her to initiate instead of doing it yourself. Having overly deep conversations over text without ever having expressed how you feel about her. Blowing off other women for her, even though she's still giving you no indication of interest. Letting her use you as a therapist and handyman. Mm. <laughs> Imagine this, you're talking to a guy for okay. about two months. Things okay. are going really well. He takes you on an awesome weekend getaway to a cozy cabin. Yeah, he wanted to smash. Yeah, okay. It's perfect. You're like, this could really, this could really go somewhere. A couple weeks after the cabin, things are kind of like slowing down a little bit. Yeah, he, he just got what wanted he wanted. to smash, that's all. <laughs> and you check in and you're like, is everything okay? He says, yeah. Explains what his family's dealing with. Says, this is why I'm sorry. I said, no problem. I can give you as much or as little space as needed. He says, nope, I appreciate you. I want you, like, I want to keep pursuing this, essentially. So you give him a space. You haven't seen each other in a couple weeks. You make plans to see each other today. This morning you talk to him. He tells me what's going on. I say, you have a lot going on. Do you want to reschedule tonight? He says, no, I haven't seen you in weeks. I want to see you tonight. I say, okay, because I would rather know now so I don't waste my whole day. He says, nope. So you get ready. You take an everything shower. You get completely ready, head to toe. 6 p.m., he sends you a snap, drinking a beer, saying it's gonna be a long night at the parents, rough night. You say, so should I not have gotten ready to come over to your house? Mind you, it's an hour drive. He says, probably not, it's been a rough night, whatever. I have an update for that story. And before everybody comes at me and says you were supposed to block him, I know. 
I didn't block him though because I like to know when someone's thinking. About no, that's Cap. She didn't block him because he was a Chad. That's why. Me mm -hmm. and, wants to text and still had hope. I want to know what they have to say. Yeah. But I've now unfollowed him and removed him from my friends lists on everything. Pretty much what happened is I got a little tip. I'm a little curious about this. Does that happen all the time when you start dating someone? Do you guys just start adding each other on all your friends list and everything? I don't do that. I don't add them to my Facebook, to my Instagram. None of these women that I've ever really dated have my Instagram. They can get it easily, but I don't follow anybody on Instagram other than particular creators. So why do people do that? slash hammered with my girlies the other night and I didn't know that I did this but I texted him and I pretty much just said like you broke no contact and because he liked one of my posts and you know to a girl that like means something um and then yes only to a girl he texted me back and was like what do you mean that's what I woke up to that text and I just texted him back and was like please disregard I was hammered he didn't reply so I was like floof that was a close one that was scary 12 hours later I get a paragraph from him saying, I fucked up. I fucked with your head. Um, uh, you're great. You deserve all good things. His quote, I'm a man, but I'm not man enough to take care of another man's kids. Okay. I get it now. I get it. it oh, it I didn't know she was a sense, single mom. Guys. It all makes sense. And I realized that. And I'm like, what? You let him hit it wrong. You didn't have second thoughts. Now you're a single mom. Now you're a single mom. What's up, my guys? Is it me or are an overwhelming majority of women just crazy these days? Well, I have some theories. Here are three tips for spotting these women and dodging a major headache. Number one, avoid women who have made it their purpose to climb the corporate ladder. Sure, ambition and motivation. First of all, guys, you should avoid women that are overly emotional, that can't control their emotions. You don't want to mess with women like that. ...are great. And I'm not saying they should abandon their careers, but I promise you, a woman who has dedicated her entire career to competing with men to make some yeah. other man richer will never be able to just flip a switch and prioritize your relationship. And she's too masculine. Number two, avoid women who hop on every new diet fad. Men can yeah. starve themselves and all that happens is they get a little short-tempered. Ladies, if you don't eat protein and fat, your endocrine system will hate you. And number three, avoid women who speak positively about their hoe phase. If she's proud of all those dudes yeah. that helped her find herself, the girl she found is not someone you want to be dating. So yeah. your dating life sucks. And it's because of dating apps and social media. The average woman gets so much attention while you sit there withering away. Well, that's one way to look at it. Kind of sucks if you ask me though, because from that perspective, you're a victim who can't change anything. Another way to look at it is that attracting the opposite sex requires certain skills yeah. that weren't taught in school or by our parents. That's so wrong, guys. You're not taught that in school and your parents don't know what's happening in the dating market in 2024. So they can't help you. Nope. Entrepreneurs know that they don't just wake up one day and have a business. Gotta learn how to sell, advertise, innovate. So it is with dating. Gotta learn how to approach, flirt, yep. and escalate. Just like business, at first it's hard, but then it gets better. Really? You put an empty sauce bottle in the fridge? What am I gonna do with that? Follow me. I need to show you something. Really? You left the car on E again? What am I going to do with that? Or they leave empty bottles in the car door. <laughs> really? You couldn't have just put it in the hamper? Come here. I want to show you something. Really? You can't just put the cardboard in the recycling bin? <laughs> Take a look at the shower. What is this? We making wall art here? <laughs> you guys about ready? It's been like about an hour. Five more minutes. Relax. Yeah. Are you seriously playing video games right now? We're already late. Okay, guys, it's time for me to answer a couple of questions. 
if a man has been unemployed for a while and trying to do his best to become a better version of himself, should he be denied the chance of dating, being married to a woman? Are women sympathetic and accepting if her husband boyfriend doesn't want her money because he doesn't have enough money, almost broke, wants to be loved by her and he does the same for her as well? Would you say that is a deal breaker? If a man is unemployed, does that mean the same logic should also be applied to a woman? Because if she was unemployed and he had a job, does that mean she deserves nothing? My guy, the problem is that men aren't loved unconditionally. It's just, Only it is what it women, is. children and pets are loved unconditionally. Men have to provide some kind of value to be loved. We talked about this, right? We talk about this all the time. A man's value is the value that you can provide for all the people around you. Your community, your family, your friends, your co-workers, people you know. You are utility. If you have no utility, no use. You are useless in all of man's eyes. I know this is not what you want to hear. It's hard, but society doesn't value men that don't bring anything, mm -hmm. that, that don't create anything. You always have to provide something as a man. You always have to prove yourself as a man. It's not the same with a woman. That's why it's always women and children first. Mm -hmm. That's why men go to war, because we are disposable. That's, that's the truth, my guy. I know you want me to say that it doesn't matter how much money you make, you're deserving of love. But that's not real. That's not reality. I don't want to lie to you. Is there a chance you could meet a woman like that? Of sure. Course. Sure, of course. But how likely would that be? Slim to none. It's very unlikely. It's more likely that you would win the, the lottery than finding a woman like that that doesn't care about anything. And even if you do, that woman won't be a traditional woman, won't be a conservative woman because a conservative traditional woman wants the man to provide. Let me just give you an example. If I didn't have any money, if I didn't have any knowledge to share with anybody, society wouldn't care about me. Nope. It wouldn't. I learned this really young. I tell you guys, my father told me this, you know, the story. When you are rich and you have money, when you call people, people are excited. People are like, oh my God, he's calling me. Oh shit, Red's calling me. You know, I'm going to pick up his phone. I'm excited. That's how people genuinely feel when a, a person that is of high status, rich, wealthy, contacts you. Now you think of the opposite. Now think of that rich person that lost everything now. Now he contacts people because he's poor, because he has no money. How do people view him? They're like, ah. Oh, it's him again. He's probably going to call me and ask for money. Or he's going to call me to ask for something. He must need something. This is just how m people's brains and people's minds kind of work. So yes, it's best to all men's advantages to be the best you can and to provide the most utility you can for everyone around you. You have to be worth something. Let me give you another example. I always had friends that were very rich. Always. Why? Because my philo philosophy was, if I want to make money, I have to spend time with people that make money. Right. Because they have all kinds of relationships and they can help a lot. And I can see their mentality and I can meet other people that make money. Now just think about it. If I can't make any more money, those friends are gone instantly. Correct. Why? Because I'm not valuable anymore to them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because if they want to go somewhere, I don't have money to go with them. 
And it's the same for me. I don't want to have a, a friend that doesn't bring any value to me because I'm just wasting my time. Why would I want to be friends with somebody that is stupid, that has no money, that has no relationships, that basically can't provide anything to me? Because those would be what we call or what the industry calls the hang around guys, the hang around friends. They're good to hang around with, but that's it. They're not worth they're not worth anything else other than just to hang around with. If he's friends with, with me, he knows he can trust my judgment. He can ask me anything and I will answer. I can help him with anything. I can help him on so many levels. So I'm of benefit to his life. What benefit does he bring to my life? Nothing. Okay, the next question. If men stop simping, do the problems with women, hypergamy, boss babes, cheating, go away? Is simping the core problem? Yes. yes. Simping enables women to act and to be how they are. Correct. If no man on earth, no man ever talked to a woman that is a single mother, wouldn't even say hello to them, would they still rush into a relationship? Would, would they still rush into a marriage? Would they still make children? Would there still be so many of them? No. Without thinking 10 times before doing it? No. Okay, and another question from the same guy. What percentage of women are hypergamous in your opinion? Is it worse in other women? They're all hypergamous in one way or another. Even if they're not after your money. They're after looks and status. See, they don't care about your money. Then it means you're very good looking. You're very tall. You're good in bed. You, you still have something that they want. They want a guy that is taller, that, that uh, is better looking, uh, that makes more money. Uh, that Smarter. Whatever it is. They're all hypergamous in one way or another. Even if they don't care about all of that. They just like you because you're very smart. They're hypergamous in that sense. Mm -hmm. Because they want a smarter guy than them. To guide them. To be the leader. Because if you're smart, you know how to guide them. She can trust you. So they're all hypergamous in one way or another. Whew, shout out to Manosphere. That was some direct chow. Single mothers. You have to provide some kind of value to the man. Don't just think that you're the prize. No, you're a burden. Please subscribe down below. I really appreciate that. And I'll catch you guys next time. <laughs>